Pet Life Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business with TyTheDogGuy.com on PetLifeRadio.com. This is the show where we help you start or grow your dog-related business to a healthy six figures or seven figures per year income. Today I'm going to be talking with you about why your advertising is failing. If you've tried to grow your business using advertising and you haven't been able to find something that clicks or hits or works or you think advertising doesn't work then you need to listen to this show because I'm going to share with you exactly what you're doing wrong so that your advertising isn't working. So stay right with us. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite is nutrition. Pick up two bottles of Lico Chops. Get the third bottle free. New improved Lico Chops with omega-3, omega-6, vitamin E, and now six extra direct-fed microbials. Even better for the digestive tract and immune system. Try Lico Chops. Buy two, get one free at Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All right, folks, we're back. And this is, like I say, Ty the Dog Guy on Six Figure Dog Business. I mentioned, I, I changed my intro a little bit to say six figures or seven figures. I had forgotten we've been a seven figure business for a couple years now. And so these techniques that I share can not only help you get to six figures, but help you get to seven figures. So, like I say, today we're going to be working on advertising. This is a big one. A lot of dog-related businesses, and I'm talking a lot of you guys, I'm talking dog trainers, pet sitters, dog walkers, um, dog groomers, uh, even boarding kennels, daycares, even some like uh, of the smaller veterinary offices. Like a lot of you folks struggle to grow past a certain point, right? You get to a certain point and then, you know, maybe you're making gains every year, you know, a few percentage points and things like that. But but you're stuck. And when it comes like, all right, I do want to hire, I do want to grow. Or maybe you don't even want to grow, but you simply want to make your life easier and work less. A lot of you run into that problem. And for a lot of you, advertising is the problem. A lot of you have tried it. And a lot of people say it doesn't work. Or, you know, they've tried it and they've had some success. Or maybe they've tried it and maybe there was some success, but none other times. And there's nothing that's popping, right? There's nothing that, hey, I know that I can go to this well every time and I'm going to be able to drink, you know, when we're talking about advertising. And so I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about the things that you need to change that are, ma- you know, that are making your advertising fail right now. And so, so like I say, if you've wanted to grow or, or wanted to make your life easier, listen to this episode because it's going to help you a ton. All right. So let me look at my list here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven things that I was preparing for this show. I'm sure there could be more. But these are the seven big reasons that if your advertising is failing, you're going to be able to find one of the things in here. At least one of the seven. Most of the time, it's going to be six or seven out of the seven for folks that are not getting their advertising to work. And so, so let me just jump right in. Oh, sorry. There's six. I was looking at my, uh, <laughs> I was looking at my notes here, and my first note is, why didn't your advertising work? And then I list six things, and I counted the first thing. as, Anyways, so I got six things. Six reasons why your advertising is not working. All right, number one, your price is too low. This is a big one. Your, not only your price is too low, but your margins are too small. And so let me give you the difference there, right? And so a low price, a price can be high, you know, like let's say for dog training, you're charging $2,000. Um, that's a high price, you know, that's a big ticket when a lot of dog training is $150 for a group class or, or a few hundred dollars that some trainers charge for like several sessions or something like that. Or maybe you're a groomer and you're $100 per groom when the average around you is $60. Or maybe you're a, a veterinarian and your office fee is $50 where the other guys are doing it for $20. Whatever it is, you're either, your prices are either too low or your margins are too low. So, because like I say, you could have that $2,000 price point as a dog trainer 
but it might cost you $1,900 to fulfill it. Therefore, there's no profit there. And there's, there's nothing that you can take out to use for advertising. So that's low margin. If you're $2,000 and your margins are 35%, 40%, for example, you know, that'll give you $800, $700. You know, that'll give you a margin with, with, you, with which you can buy a client. And notice what I said there, to buy a client, because that is what you are doing as a business owner. And I get pushback on this one. Some business owners say, no, I don't, I don't need to buy my clients. I don't need to advertise. And that's fine if you think that, but no matter what your business is, you are buying clients, whether you recognize it or not. So if you're that business owner that is posting on Facebook yard sale groups or you have a nice frontage office, you know, your, your veterinary office has nice frontage and, and a lot of people drive by or you do a really great job and you get a lot of referrals. Every one of those is an example of buying clients. If you're spending time in Facebook groups, your time is money. You're buying clients. If you invest in a nice office or a nice you know, training center or a nice whatever that has good frontage and so people come because they see you, you're buying clients. If you are doing a really good job with clients, that means that you're putting in above average effort and you're in customer service. That is your time that's going in. You are buying clients. So no matter what you're doing, if you're doing advertising, you're exchanging dollars, hopefully, if you're doing it right, you're exchanging dollars to get clients. If you are doing something else, you're exchanging exposure, time, effort, networking to get clients. But when you break all of that down, that is all money. Every single thing, because time, effort, exposure, all of these things end up costing you money because you're not working at those times. You're not doing other, you know, you're not doing other things. And so every single thing, every single client that comes in your door, you bought it. The thing is you often can't measure how much it costs you when you're simply getting referrals. And so you can't measure it. And so you don't even look at it and realize that it's taking you money to get those referrals, but it is. And so, so like I say, the neat thing about advertising is you can really get it down to cost per client. You know, that I know, for example, that in my business, I can spend a hundred to $200 and buy a client. Now, and this is like I say, if my price is low, if I'm doing a lot of group classes for $150 and, I, and it takes me $100 or $200 to, to buy them, it's not going to go very well for me, is it? Or, you know, if you're a groomer and, you know, you tend to get people to come two times to you or three times to you and your prices are $40 per groom and so you're making $80 to $120 per client, you cannot advertise with money, you're going to have to put in tons of time and effort and networking to do it, which ultimately is probably going to cost you more. And this is why so much burnout occurs with, with us, you know, dog professionals, because people don't know how to advertise. And so the only thing they have left is lots of time, effort, networking, things like that, and, you know, to get exposure. And when you're putting in all that time and effort, you're doing so much stuff to get that client. You're putting in so much effort to get that client that it, it causes burnout. And so this is why advertising can be a great way to, you know, a great way to counter burnout is because I can put in 200 bucks and get a client. And that's all it took, you know, because I've got systems that work. And so how nice would that be? Now, again, our average client, I don't have my numbers with me and I'm, I'm awful at tracking them. Um, but I think our average client is just over $2,000. So if I can spend $200, $100, it depends on the month, depends on what's going on. But let's say $200 because I'm going high. If I can spend $200 and get $2,000, $2,500 time and time again, how foolish am I to not spend money on advertising? I mean, like, think of how many people put money into the stock market and they're hoping to get 5% return this year. And there's nothing wrong with 5% return. That's a great place to park your money, probably, if you talk to a money manager. I'm not a money manager. But I can get, you know, a 1,000% return on my money in like a month by putting it into advertising. And so like I say, but it, it, you have to have prices that justify it. And so a lot of people that fail put money into advertising, but they did it in such a way that, or, or sorry, their business is structured in such a way that there simply is not enough margin or revenue to be able to purchase clients. And so the only resource they have with which to purchase it is time. And folks, that sucks. Long-term, that sucks. Now, every business should be putting in time, of course. You know, 
making your customers happy so you get word of mouth, you know, putting out content, uh, you know, engaging, networking. These are all fantastic things. Don't get me wrong. It's not that you should stop doing those at all. It's just recognize that there is nothing inherently better about putting in time versus putting in money because they're both putting in time. Or, sorry, they're both putting in money, right? And so, like I say, it's, it's critical that you understand and you get that, hey, there is an easier use of your time. You can buy back a lot of your time if you simply figure out how to use advertising if you have enough price, you know, enough margin and a high enough price. So that's the first one. Your price or your margin is too low. All right, second one. Here's another biggie. Your offer is unclear. And so what do I mean by that? Your offer that you're offering somebody when they engage with your advertising and your advertising, let me just be clear here. I could be talking about YouTube advertising, Facebook advertising, Google PPC. Um, so those are the big online ones, right? I could be talking about that. I could be talking about magazine. You know, if you've got local magazines, local newspaper stuff, radio, television, postcards, things like that, right? And so when most dog businesses advertise, the offer they're putting out into the marketplace is unclear. And again, I get pushed back on this because people say, no, 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 it's, it's very clear. I do dog training. I, I'm a veterinarian. I'm a groomer, things like that. I was in a grooming group. I'm in a grooming group on Facebook the other day, and somebody was like, what do you think about my advertisement? And it was, uh, it was a nice picture of a dog, and it said, I don't remember the name. It was some, the name of the grooming company up at the top and a phone number at the bottom. And so it was obvious that they do grooming and there's their phone number. <laughs> but that's a very unclear offer. Why should somebody engage with that offer? Are you better at grooming? How are you better? Are you better at customer service? How are you better? Are your prices better? How are they better? Are your prices higher? Why are they higher? Are you going to make my life easier? How? Is my dog going to be more safe with you than the other groomers? How? Do you see what I'm saying? That <laughs> she thought the offer was clear because it said whatever grooming and it had a phone number and a picture of a dog, right? So she thought this was very clear um, because she was going to go start posting that uh, picture on a lot of like garage sale groups and a lot of Facebook groups. And would she get clients from it? Maybe, you know, but the clients that she would get would be the lowest hanging fruit, probably the people looking for price, you know, for the best price, right? It's somebody that like, I'm looking for grooming right now. Wow, grooming picture is in front of my face. Here we go. I'll call it. Maybe, you know, maybe even not. But like I say, the only way she's going to get clients are the lowest hanging fruit. And advertising Proper advertising is about getting better clients than that, frankly. You know, proper advertising is about helping people understand how your service or product is uniquely qualified to solve their problem. And when I look in local magazines, because I love looking in local magazines, and it might be, you know, sometimes it's local pet magazines, right? A lot of communities have these. And I love looking at the advertising. Um, and often what I see is such and such veterinary clinic, here's our address, here's our phone number, we work with dogs, cats, exotics, and blah, 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 right? And so is that a clear message? Is that a clear offer? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What is the offer? You're just telling somebody that you exist. You're not giving them any reason to work with you, none. And so if you're not giving them any reason, the only way you'll get clients out of advertising with no real offer is the lowest hanging fruit, somebody that is actively looking for it right now. And this is the most expensive way to advertise. And again, this drives your advertising cost up, which makes it so that most people can't do it. So when you're doing that, when you're putting something out there without an offer, you're just asking to fail with your advertising. So what is the offer? You can look at a number of different ways. So for some businesses where they rely on a lot of repeat business, so maybe that veterinary office, that grooming shop, daycare, things like that, a good offer might be a discount. And I'm not a big fan of discounting service long-term at all. But if they're going to be coming back time and time again because you're a veterinary office and they're going to get their teeth cleaning today because they've got a great, you've got a great offer on teeth cleaning, they're going to come back for shots and they're going to come back for neutering and they're going to come back when their dog's sick and they're going to come back when their dog has this and they're, you know, stuff like that, right? And so if you aren't making any money on that first transaction or maybe are even paying money to clean their dog's teeth, it's worth it because they're going to be coming back, right? If you do a good enough job to get them to come back. So an offer could be a discount, you know, such, you know, discount off of the grooming, a discount off of a service, a teeth cleaning, a discount off of daycare. An offer could be a discount. An offer could be a bonus. Use this thing and you're going to get this added thing on top. 
and you could look at this as discounting or a bonus. They, they can sometimes like interchange, right? Like buy one grooming, get one grooming free. That's a bonus. You could also look at that as like a 50% discount, however you want to look at it, but you know, a bonus or, you know, like your bank does become a client and get a free toaster or, you know, as, as a veterinarian, become a, you know, become a first time client and get this puppy pack that has food and this and that and the other. Right. And so the offer could be bonus related. So it could be discount related. It could be bonus related or it could be value related. And so, so discount or bonus related are often really good ways to, to bring in leads and clients for using advertising for, for businesses that rely on uh, repeat business. You can take the hit on the first transaction as long as you're really good at getting them back in. Um, now, let's say you are more of a business to where, yeah, there's some repeat business, but you're a higher ticket offer and they're probably going to use you once for the next several years, right? So that would be dog training. That would be, you know, dog training is a big one that's coming to mind in the dog industry. Uh, maybe a dog psychic, you know, the, or maybe like dog fence, you know, dog fence, uh, hidden fence or dog fence enclosure, stuff like that, right? And so can you use discount offers there? Yes. But often when you do that, you end up with the price shoppers um, who don't care about value. And so often the way to go with advertising for a, for a higher ticket offer, and a higher ticket offer, a business could have both. You know, um, so for example, a veterinary office could have all of their smaller ticket stuff, you know, the office visits, the this, the that, the other. But maybe your veterinary office that also does rehab for dogs that have had surgery or something because you've got this cool water tank that they swim in and you've got this process and, and it's $3,000 for the rehab. You could be doing discount offers or bonus offers for advertising over here on your other stuff. And then over here, it could be a value play. So like I say, it's, it's not necessarily specific to business, but it's more the high ticket thing. So if you've got a high ticket offer like dog training or a big health thing through a veterinary thing or fencing or a big dog product, you might want to go value. And so when I say value, what makes you unique in the marketplace such that somebody should use you versus anybody else? That's the answer to the question. And so, you know, for example, when we do advertising, a lot of our advertising are, you know, what we're talking to people about is, hey, no matter what you're dealing with in 60 days or less, we can help you overcome it. Would you like to know more? And so I don't have to offer a discount. I'm just piquing their interest on like, wow, I've got this aggression issue or I've got this and it's big time and I haven't been able to fix it. And they say they can in 60 days. Yeah, I'm interested. And so you bring them in as a lead and then you do an education process and then, you know, ideally you can sell them. But like I say, I'm not in love with discount offers. I know a lot of people do, but I tend to find that they run into bigger problems. And so, so like I say, try to do value offers to where, you know, or what you might call a USP, unique selling proposition. Like what is so unique about you that someone should use you over anybody else? And, and so like I say, for us, our, our core program is called Transform Your Dog in 60 Days. Maybe you've got a program for puppies. Maybe you're a dog trainer. You know, you have a program for puppies and it's like, hey, I know you've tried the $150 group class and it got your dog to sit for a treat. What if your dog could be doing this and you show a four month old puppy doing some amazing obedience and stuff like that? That shows, you know, you don't even have to state it, but you show something incredibly unique that somebody wants and then you can collect leads from something like that, right? Does that make sense? All right, so I've got four more of these. I'm going a little bit long here. I'm gonna take a quick break, but I'm gonna come back with four more and we're gonna get through these and, and, and you're gonna understand by the end of this podcast why your advertising is not working. So stay right with us. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com All right, folks, we are back, and we're talking about why your advertising isn't working. So the first reason it's not working is your price is too low or your margins are too low. The second reason 
is your offer is unclear. It's not clear why somebody should take the time to do business with you right now. It's just not, okay? Let's see, number three, you're using the wrong format in your advertising. And I hinted at this before, so let me tell you what the right format is. And so before I was talking about that fictional veterinarian who's advertising in the, um, in the local magazine saying, hey, we're a veterinary office, we're located here, we work with these dogs and cats and exotics, and um, we do this, or whatever, right? That's not the way to do an ad. The way to do an ad, there's, uh, let me see, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. There's four things that need to be a part of your ad. Number one, you need to identify who you're talking to. Now, sometimes that's implied if you're talking about dog stuff, but sometimes it's not. You got to make sure that you're calling out your audience. And sometimes that's literal. Like in, in my video ads, <laughs> hey, Salt Lake City dog owners. <laughs> you know, that's how I start my video ad because I got to call out who I'm talking to. When I do my written ads, same things. Hey, Salt Lake City dog owners. When We're on Facebook, for example. So, uh, we've got to call out who the audience is. Maybe yours is specific. You know, maybe your veterinary office and like I said, you specialize in rehab. Hey, has your dog had an injury? You know, uh, that somewhere in that first part, you've got to call out your, your audience so that it immediately starts qualifying the people that are your clients and disqualifying the people that aren't. Because the, you know, A1 number one top thing is get people engaged with your with your ad that are good clients. But right beneath that, as far as priorities, is get people disengaged that are not because you want to figure out what advertising is working and what isn't, and you don't want the wrong people engaging with it because then you're getting leads that are lousy, and then you're saying, oh, advertising doesn't work because I'm getting all these leads and no one wants to buy. And so call out who your audience is. You need to identify who they are. The second thing you need to do is identify what their problem is. Again, you have a unique solution, do you not? If you do, what is their problem? It, you know, if you're a groomer, their problem might be they just don't have time. You know, it's hard for them to make time for appointments. And so you've got a service where you pick them up or you've got a scheduling service that's better than your competitors. And so you call it, hey, you know, hey, dog owners in the Cincinnati, hey, Cincinnati dog owners, are you having the hardest time finding, you know, a way to schedule your dog in for grooming? We have such and such, blah, you know, system that makes it so much easier and you can get in same day. I don't know, you know, something like that, right? But whatever's unique about you, you're first calling out the audience, talking about what their problem is, and then telling what the solution is or hinting at the solution. Solution. And oftentimes the hint is so that they have to take the next step in order to become a lead. And then you've got a lead to work with. So those are the first three. Identify who you're speaking with, talk about what their problem is, and then mention your solution. Talk about your solution. And the fourth thing is how to get it. A call to action. And, and this is what is missing on so many. Every advertisement I ever see has a phone number, it has a website, things like that. But that's not a call to action. A call to action is Call this number now to get pricing information in your area. A call to action is enter your information now to get immediate pricing and program information. Those are calls to action because it tells them exactly what to do and what's going to come of it once they do it. And so that's so important. You've got to tell them how to do something. People are not stupid, but when you don't put calls to action versus when you do, you will get so much less engagement with your ad. If you simply tell people exactly what to do and what will happen, a CTA, a call to action, you will get more engagement. And this is your advertising. This is your website. This is your phone message. This is everything. Okay. All right. Next thing. One, two, three, four. Number four, you're on the wrong platform. So like I say, there's tons of advertising platforms. There's Facebook, Google, YouTube, mailers, park benches, you know, things like that. Where is your market right now? that's where you need to be. And so now your market, there's a caveat here because everybody's market is on Facebook. All of you guys, I don't care which dog business you're in. Every single one of you, the majority of your clients are on Facebook. And so we know that they're there, but are they in a position where they're caring about what you have at this moment? Maybe, maybe not. And so is Facebook good for your offer? It depends. Is it something, is it a discount offer where somebody's just happening to scroll past and they're like, oh, cool, I could actually use this poop, dog poop service. And they're offering a trial, a trial membership or they're offering a discount. Yeah, I think I'll take that. If you're doing a $4,000 dog training program, if you're doing a $3,000 dog rehab program at your veterinary office, how many people on Facebook are looking at for that right now? Probably not many. And so that doesn't make Facebook the wrong platform. It just means you might need to narrow that platform down. So maybe you need to retarget people 
that came to your website on Facebook because you know that they're interested, so you retarget them on Facebook. Now it becomes the right platform. But if you're just simply targeting you know, dog owners in your area and you've got this high ticket offer that only a few people are going to have any use for, then starting straight out of the gate that way is not gonna be the right usage of your, uh, of your advertising dollars. What about Google PPC? Very often the right, you know, is the right platform because people are typing in questions or, you know, they're typing in their problem. They're saying aggressive dog trainers in Dallas, Texas, or, you know, uh, dog orthopedists in Chicago, right? And so that is the exact right platform where your ad would be great to show up right? And so, like I say, there's so many places that your ad could find itself. And actually, you know, your ad could be on the right platform, but if your offer is unclear and your message is out of whack and your prices are too low, it doesn't matter if your platform is the right one. But like I say, if all of those things are in order, you've got the right pricing, your offer is clear, you've got an ad that, you know, is going to pull interest, you have to put it in the right platform. And like I said, the right platform depends on what your offer is and so many different things. And so obviously I can't get into all of that there, but sometimes your problem is your platform is wrong. Number five is a branch of that. Sometimes your problem is you're using the platform wrong. So I've seen a lot of people strike out with Facebook marketing, you know, with Facebook advertising. And it's because they're targeting wrong. It's because their their ad is wrong. It's because their call to action is wrong. It's because you go in the back end and the way that they're bidding is wrong. Like everything is wrong about it. So Facebook was perfect for what they wanted, but they were using the platform wrong. You know, it's, uh, you know, if you're that dog trainer and you're, and someone comes to you and says, treats and clickers don't work. I tried it. You're like, no, treats and clickers work. You just used it wrong. Um, and so, so yeah, that's what people are often doing. They've got the right platform. They're just using it wrong. And wrong could be like the nuts and bolts, like you're targeting wrong, like the way that you're doing your ads on YouTube, like the back end part is wrong or all of the other things I've mentioned before about offer, how the ad is structured, things like that. Okay, and then last thing that, uh, so number six here, is an unwillingness to commit. I have met so many dog business owners that said, we tried advertising, it didn't work. Sorry, (laughs) again, more than likely, what has happened here is they did something wrong on the wrong platform and it didn't work. And they're like, well, all advertising doesn't work. And so... (laughs) <laughs> to me, that's as frustrating as you guys when you hear that stuff in your industry. When you're the dog trainer and someone said, no, I tried treats and clickers, it doesn't work. No, I tried electric collars, they don't work. Or you're at the vet's office, no, no, no. I've tried everything, his skin rash is still there, that's why I'm at you at this new vet. And all you, you find out all they did was put a cream on it, right? Or whatever it is, I've tried it, it doesn't work. Doesn't work is usually code for we did it wrong and we, we tried very little. And so if you're doing something wrong, don't keep pounding your head against the wall and doing it over and over and over. Learn how to do it and then commit to it and recognize that, hey, if you've got a proven system, that doesn't mean it's going to work like perfect the first day. But if you've got a system that you know can work, keep at it until you find what works. It took me years to develop my advertising system to where, and I've since used it with plenty of other dog trainers and dog business owners and pet sitters and dog walkers and, you know, expanding even now into other markets. But it took me years to figure that out. But now that I have, I plunk in $100, $200, I get a client. I plunk in $100, $200, I get a client. How nice would that be if you had that? That's what can happen if you figure out this whole system. So... If you need help with that, head over to tiethedogguide.com. We've got systems to where we can help dog business owners create this advertising system where you can have predictable results with leads, clients, sales, um, if you just do things right. So head over to tiethedogguide.com to check that out. At the same time, I recommend you also head over to petliferadio.com. You might already be there right now. Listen to all my episodes here at Six Figure Dog Business because they're all pretty darn amazing. And when you're done with that, there is a ton of great shows on this network. So listen to all the shows on PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for listening. I will be talking with you again soon. Let's grow them businesses. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.